What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. After finishing 11th in the Eastern Conference last season with a record of 27 and 45, the Toronto Raptors now look to begin a new era, continuing to build around their young but very, very talented core and now getting to do so returning back to their actual home in Toronto. Barring any further injury setbacks, this should also make for a prime year for the Raptors to continue to develop a lot of their young players, hopefully into stars. So today we'll be breaking down what a best case scenario would look like for five of the Raptors' young players. Just before we do get into the video though, guys, as always, if you do enjoy what you see today, please do me a huge favor, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. I want to get it started off with Gary Trent Jr. because I think a lot of eyes are going to be on him this upcoming season, of course, after the contract he got this past offseason, a three-year deal worth just south of $52 million. But Gary Trent Jr. has given me no reason to doubt that he's going to continue to develop into a fantastic, fantastic score for the Toronto Raptors. In 17 games for Toronto last season, he averaged 16.2 points per game on about 35.5% from three and 39.5% from the field. Gary Trent Jr., in my opinion, is one of the most intriguing players on the Raptors because I genuinely think he could be a massive difference maker for the Raptors. Not necessarily just because of what he does statistically, but I think he potentially has the most room for improvement on the entire roster. Gary Trent Jr. is still only 22 years old, but at 6'5", and with his shooting slash lines, I think he could genuinely continue to rise up the ranks and be one of the top young offensive guards, at least in the Eastern Conference. With no Kyle Lowry on the team either, Gary Trent Jr. is also going to get increased focus and usage on the offense. And although he averaged 15.4 shots per game last year in his time with Toronto, you can definitely expect a shift in his scoring numbers this year. Best case scenario for Gary Trent Jr., in my opinion, would be most improved player. Now, that's a little bit of a bold take, but given the slight raises to expect in terms of his usage, touches, and experience, they should all point to statistical increases this year for the Raptors shooting guard. I think overall, the team has a better identity this year, um, and the offensive scheme and dynamic this year in comparison to last year should definitely work more into the favor of Gary Trent Jr. With that being said, this is also the first time where Gary Trent Jr. is really a focal point and one of the top scoring options of an offense. So again, I think he's easily going to beat his career high, which is only 15.3 points per game and potentially work into most improved player discussions. Next up, Fred Van Vliet. Now, Freddie, of course, also has tremendously big shoes to fill this year with no Lowry on the roster, but in my opinion, is more than capable of being able to succeed in the task. Kyle Lowry obviously was so effective for the Raptors given his ability to play two ways and not only be a tremendous leader for the Raptors, but really be able to take charge, no pun intended, of the Raptors' defensive identity. By averaging 19.6 points per game last season, Fred Van Vliet also set a new career high in terms of his scoring numbers, but that number, in my opinion, should definitely be raised this upcoming year as well. Best case scenario for Fred Van Vliet, make an all-defensive team and average over 20 points per game for the first time in his young career. Defensively, of course, Fred Van Vliet is very solid and has quick hands that allow him to pressure the ball, pressure the opposition, and be able to force turnovers. He ranked first on the Raptors roster last year in defensive win shares and 15th in the league in total steals. And with the Raptors being a lot more defensive minded this year, I think this is a perfect and terrific scheme for Fred Van Vliet to find his way on a defensive all NBA team. But I think for the Raptors to produce multiple guys actually on that list. Offensively, with increased touches last year, as I mentioned, Fred Van Vliet, 19.6 points per game on about 36% from the field and 37% from three, both about 2% under his career averages. Um, so I think if he's able to get those percentages back to where they um, are averaging around his career, you know, he's a player that could definitely be within the 22 to 25 point per game range with the more touches. Next up, we have OG Ananobi. And in my opinion, OG Ananobi is the most interesting player on this entire Toronto Raptors roster, just given his two-way promise and increased offensive production last season. My honest belief is that health is the biggest factor for OG because I think the more experience that he has and the more games that he plays in, the better he's going to end up being. 
And in my opinion, with OG, it's a matter of when he's going to develop into a star in comparison to just a matter of if he's going to be a star. Best case scenario for OG and an OB, and this might be a little bold, but first uh, team all defense and an all star. Now, OG's proven that he can defend just about anybody in the NBA and plays with a high le level of energy, especially on the defensive side of the floor. Having turned just 24 years old, though, what really impresses me about OG Ananobi is the amount of defensive responsibility in this Raptors scheme that he's already been able to handle, and I genuinely believe that we're not too far away from having a Kawhi-type player on our hands. One of the most intriguing things about OG, though, has been the improvement in his offensive game. Last season increased his field goal attempts by 3.9 shots per game and only dropped his field goal percentage by only about 2.5%. OG's becoming a very solid spot-up shooter, and if he can develop his scoring a little bit more, especially off the dribble, um, I think he could start putting up some really, really huge numbers on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, next up, Pascal Siakam. I think Pascal is definitely the X factor when he's healthy in determining how the Raptors continue to move um, their franchise and the direction that they sort of go in the near future. And the big question, of course, revolving around him is or can Pascal Siakam develop into that guy? Can he develop into a number one option? Now, last season, Siakam had a bit of a down year, slight decrease in his scoring numbers, only averaged 21.4 points per game, but struggled heavily from three, only shooting about 29.7% from beyond the arc. Um, the potential for Siakam is definitely still there, though, and I got really, really high hopes for him because even in what you would call a down year, quote-unquote, still put up fairly decent numbers. And with no Lowry here, this is definitely Siakam's team. Um, and if we can get a Siakam that we saw sort of a couple years ago, um, you know, I think the Raptors are going to be living large. Best case scenario for Pascal Siakam, get back to all-star caliber, potential all-NBA third team caliber. Now, gauging specific accolades this year for Siakam might be a little bit difficult because we still don't know how much time at the beginning of the year he's actually going to miss with the injury. But regardless of however long he does end up playing the season and however many games he, he does play in, I think the goal should be when he does play, average 22 to 23 points per game, coupled with seven and a half boards, which would be, I think, 0.2 above his career high and 4.5 assists, which would tie his career high. Um, this would mean that he essentially keeps the same shooting lines as last year um, in terms of the field goal and free throw percentages and the same amount of touches, of course, but has to get his three-point percentage to near 35%, which I think would be a, a very, very solid season for Siakam, again, in the same amount of touches. But I'd assume that the usage numbers uh, do go up for Siakam this year. I think another big thing for Siakam is especially late in games. You just need some consistency from him. Um, I think that's going to be huge as Siakam does try to develop into a star um, and assert himself as really a top power forward in the entirety of the league. Last but not least, we have Scotty Barnes, and I wasn't initially going to touch on any rookies um, or players like Scotty Barnes because I think it's really tough to gauge expectations without actually having seen him play in the regular season in the actual NBA yet. However, from what I've seen so far in the Summer League and uh, from his time at Florida State is that Scotty Barnes, A, is an extremely hard worker. He's got a great work ethic. And B, can affect games outside of scoring in terms of things like his defense, playmaking, and rebounding abilities. Therefore, the best case scenario for him um, is sort of two parts. Number one, gain confidence at the NBA level. And B, uh, be in talks for Rookie of the Year. Gaining confidence sounds like a silly thing to say in terms of a best case scenario, but I genuinely do think this is the biggest thing for Scotty Barnes because I think with more confidence comes A, a better shooting motion, and then B, a better shooting percentage, especially from beyond the arc. Uh, which is probably his biggest weakness. If you can get Scotty Barnes into double-digit scoring over 10 points per game, which is right around where he sat at his final year at Florida State, I think he averaged 10.3 points per game, um, and couple that with about 30% from three, I think you'll be happy with the developments that Scotty Barnes has been making. Overall, though, again, because of the way he fills up the stat sheet, I do think he has a great shot at winning Rookie of the Year. Uh, fills up the stat sheet, obviously, with some steals, with some blocks, so on the defensive side of the ball. But again, as I was saying before, he can get you some rebounds. He can get you some assists on top of what scoring he's able to do. Um, so I think, you know, again, he, he does have a shot to be in Rookie of the Year talks, obviously. And plus, I think out of all the high draft picks, being with the Toronto Raptors um, is probably the best situation to be successful. So um, we'll have to wait and see. 
see. But anyways, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and predictions down in the comment section below on anything that I talked about today. If you guys did enjoy what you saw, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again next time.